It's right about that time. So why don't we uh, take a few moments to prepare our hearts and minds to worship for worship. And our uh, prelude this morning is they will know we are Christians by our love. Welcome. We are one in the Spirit. We are Welcome, everybody, to our service of morning prayer. Our service begins on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 2 of your bulletin. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Okay, our confession of sin can be found on page 2 of your bulletin. Uh, page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord, be, Lord open our lips. <laughs> and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, can be found on page 83 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 3 of your bulletin. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, 
the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Psalm 23, King James's version is found on page three of your bulletin or page 476 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson can be found on page four of today's bulletin and is a reading from Acts chapter four. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised for the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer attributed to St. Francis can be found on page four of your bulletin or page 833 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Chapter the Song of Redeemed can be found on page five of the bulletin and on page 94 in the Book of Common Prayer. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. 
Your ways are ways of the righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you are only the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is found on page five of your bulletin. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. 
The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From our gospel this morning, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome everybody to uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. This fourth Sunday of Easter is always about the Good Shepherd. We always have the 23rd Psalm, and today we heard the King James Version, that version we know so well, that version that just kind of lives in our soul, or at least I hope for you it lives in your soul. We also had the reading from the Gospel of John, the fact that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, that the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This being Good Shepherd Sunday, all over the world today, it's really kind of fun to think of, that all over the world today, preachers are trying to, to share an image of either the shepherd or imagery of the sheep, trying to explain how uh, the sheep follow, how the shepherd calls each and every one of them. And that was what really jumped into my mind today as I heard, especially that 23rd Psalm, how the shepherd calls us and leads us out into the world. It goes with the 23rd, the 23rd Psalm. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Now these shepherds, and the good shepherd does a lot, doesn't it? We know the good shepherd lays down his life for all. The shepherd also cares for them. The good shepherd protects them. The good shepherd remains there with them and knows their name. And the good shepherd leads. Now all we have to do is follow, right? That should be pretty simple. So as I've reflected on this, and the fact that the shepherd leads us beside the still waters, leads us in the paths of righteousness, I reflect on this last year plus now that we've been living in these COVID times. How Jesus, how the good shepherd has led us into places we never would have thought of going. I mean, the shepherd leads us into Zoom, onto Facebook, onto YouTube Live, all the different ways that congregations are sharing this message, sharing God's good news out into the world. I mean, think about how far we have come because we followed. How much we have learned and how much we have hopefully understood our faith now in a new way because we were led, led by the Holy Spirit, led by the Good Shepherd, and we were willing to follow. <laughs> yes, Sometimes kicking and screaming, I, I know that. That's why the shepherd has the, the hook, that hook at the end of their staff. That's to catch those kicking and screaming sheep. I think my heels probably have bruises all over them because I've been caught so many times saying, come back, come back, it's okay. So we've been led into a new understanding. We've been led into a new way of of being church. And now here next week, we will, we will start to return a little bit more to our normal state. We'll start to have in-person services again. 
will meet together and on Zoom both. And I've got to wonder how the Holy Spirit, how the Good Shepherd is going to lead us in these new times. What are those new learnings for us? What's going to change? Not physically, not because now we'll have to wear masks, and no, I don't have one on right now because uh, I'm the only one other than our sound crew in this building. Not those types of changes, masks and social distancing, but what's going to change in our hearts? How are we going to re-enter in a new way and, and be willing to be led into a new understanding of what church is? gathered we have held on to we have been led to in understanding that this church our prayers go well beyond these walls our homes have become places of sanctuary and our sanctuary haven't they they have become a spiritual place in ways that i don't think happened a year and a half ago so I hope and I pray that we hold on to those even as we're led into new areas. Even as, we, even as we know that the Good Shepherd is with us, are we ready to be led? Are we ready to hear our new call, if you will? The new way of being. Not that our mission has changed, our mission, the mission of every Christian, is to spread God's word out into the world, to reconcile the world to God, to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. So that hasn't changed. That's been true from the very beginning. That was true when, when John, 1 John was written in the epistle that we heard today. I love that. Little children, let us love. Not in word or speech, but in truth and action. That's our call as Christians, to love in truth and action, to love in ways that people can see that without us using those words. That's what St. Francis speaks of. As he would say, preach the gospel always, use words if necessary. Hopefully our lives are preaching that gospel. So now as we gather, as we begin to start gathering again, we will come back into this building to be fed, to meet and, and have community in a new way again. But we also will be sent out. We continue to be sent out to share that good news, to make sure that people know the love that we have received. Know that good shepherd. And know that that good shepherd will lay down his life for us, has laid down his life for us on that cross. So today as we hear about the good shepherd, as we hear all the different aspects of a good shepherd, may we know that we're not alone. But we all, may we also know that we are being led into new areas. Being led into new ways of being church. New ways of being Christians. The question for us today is will we follow? Are we as a church, are you as an individual ready to follow the Good Shepherd, when we hear his call. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Apostles' Creed can be found on page 6 of your bulletin or page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father oh. Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our song of praise. appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. And this uh, today we have a wonderful musical and uh, video production of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray.
And now we continue with Suffrages B, found on page 98 of the Book of Common Prayer, or on page 7 of your bulletin. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. And our collect for this fourth Sunday of Easter, O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for the whole human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the mission of the church. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your, your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us with your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 8 of our bulletin. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Today we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have em entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Steve Lewis. Jan P., Pam H., Arlene, Megan, and the Coltisco family, Jan and family, Baby Violet, Michael C., Michael L., Irene, Christy, Leslie, Lawrence M., Dave and Judy, Josh S., Mary P., David C., Debbie and family, 
our military families, law enforcement, and first responders, our homebound parishioners, and those in nursing facilities. Today, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, those in quarantine, and their families. We prayed for the continued moisture during this time of drought in Colorado and the West. And today we especially pray for, pray for our country. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for understanding. And we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. We also celebrate with those who have birthdays this week and last. Shelley Flanagan, Caleb Soroki, Greg Sippel, Troy Jenkins, John Arthur, Rob Brooks, Linda Tyler, Brian Holcomb, Joe Cassell, Colleen Cudney, and Ava Hupp. As well as those with anniversaries this week, and last, John and Carol Nelson, Rich and Julia Plotke, Father Brian and Sherry Winter. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, everyone. I invite you to share God's peace with those in your household and after the service to reach out to those outside of your household and share God's peace with them. Just a few uh, announcements of a life in the parish. Uh, today we had our Sunday school class at 930. So I uh, saw that for a, a short time I was on there. They had a great godly play, uh, uh, a story about the good shepherd. So always great to have that. Uh, tonight at four o'clock we have the youth group. So those from 6th to 12th grade, please join us for youth group this evening. Also, uh, this week we'll be making the hire of our new Christian formation director. So we've got all the approvals, everything's set, and uh, I think we've got the right person. So we'll reach out to them and, uh, and offer that position to them. So thank you all for uh, your prayers on that. Also, as I mentioned um, in the sermon and all, next week we will start to uh, uh, have in-person services again. I want to thank everyone who filled out the survey. In just like four days uh, up till Thursday, we already had over 70 people responding. And with them responding, we asked how many people they were responding for in their household. And over 125 people uh, uh, spoken for, if you will. And with that, um, over 73% were um, interested in coming back in person now that vaccines have been uh, taken and uh, uh, numbers are going down. So we will have both the 8 o'clock and the 1030 service starting next week in person, limited to 45 people. That'll give us about 50 with those who are uh, putting the, uh, with music and sound and myself and everything. So we do ask you to sign up. We'll have the signups uh, coming out uh, probably on Monday and ready to go. So you can sign up there. If it happens to be full, please do put your name on the wait list. One, over the uh, time that we've had outside services, some people, it cha their plans change and they, have, they let us know that they can't come and then we can get other people in. But also we need to know how many people are wanting to come back um, per service and all that. So that'll give us another guide of how many uh, uh, people were, um, are still might not be able to join us. Uh, we will still be on Zoom, so don't worry about that. If you um, wanna stay home and uh, continue to uh, watch from Zoom, either because you don't, don't feel it's time to gather yet, or if you're sick or just uh, on a particular day need to uh, stay home, we will be still on Zoom, so you can join us there as well. Also uh, coming up, uh, we, uh, uh, Leslie Soroki is now our in-reach person for Vestry, and so she's getting her team together. If you're interested in helping those people within the congregation uh, who might need meals or uh, help with uh, uh, transportation to a doctor's appointment or something like that, please do reach out to Leslie and let her know. Also, uh, let us know if you or someone you know needs, um, needs a meal. 
um, after a, a, a procedures or just in a rough spot and just need some meals or a, a ride. That is what the in-reach group is about. Our outreach goes outside our doors in amazing ways, and our in-reach makes sure that we're taking care of those within our own community. So uh, please sign up for that. If you have any other announcements that need to be shared, please email them to Ash, our parish administrator, or myself, and we'll make sure that those get out into the emails that come out every Wednesday and Friday. All right. And now we continue with the general Thanksgiving. Sherry. General Thanksgiving is found on page nine of your bulletin or in the prayer book on page 836. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying, through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life in your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Thank you.